and welcome to Legal Affairs. My name is Diamond Liddy and I'm the public defender of the 19th Judicial Circuit. We are doing something kind of totally different today and I'm, I'm pretty darn excited about it. We're kind of blending a legal topic, which today is going to be a very hot topic, for, unfortunately, for a lot of people, which are landlord-tenant issues and uh, evictions, etc., with what happens if that happens to you? Are there services available in our community for homeless uh, people? And of course, yes, there is, thanks to Louise Hubbard, who's been here forever, as long as I have, which is forever. But anyway, before we get started and talk about what we're going to talk about today, let's uh, do some introductions. Let's start with you, Amy. Um, my name is Amy Burns, and I'm the managing attorney at Florida Rural Legal Services. And I work a lot with Mountie Pools and attorney in our office, and we work with Louise all the time. We call um, her organization when we have people that are being evicted, and they help us to get sometimes funding, um, help them get caught up on rent, um, sometimes you know work with the landlords. So we all know each other. Okay, so it's a love-in, so to speak. Well, Louise, <laughs> let's let's start with your background. How you've been? What is your exact? title now. I'm the executive director of the Treasure Coast Homeless Services Council Continuum of Care. And basically what that means is that we provide prevention services and rehousing services throughout the Treasure Coast to try to keep people from falling into homelessness in the first place right. and subsequently rapidly rehousing primarily families but also disabled individuals um, as soon as possible. We try that with mostly federal and state dollar, so it's a qualifying competition every single year, and it's pretty difficult. Oh, I know. And and Louise, you've been doing this for how long? This particular job is my 14th year. Okay, but you've been involved with this for, for longer uh, than that. At least 20. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not uh, copying to anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. Well, let's let's start with the basics. Um, Amy, Melanie, you guys can kind of chime in with each other. Um, somebody is renting um, a home, an apartment, um, and they haven't paid their rent. What, what's, what is the eviction process? What do you have to do as a landlord? What can you do as a tenant? It's pretty black and white as I understand it. Um, yeah, yes, it is. Go ahead, Melanie. Okay. <laughs> um, the first step in the process um, is the landlord needs to serve, if it's for a non-payment of rent, it's going to be a three-day notice. Okay. Um, and that three-day notice has to give them at least three days, not including weekends or holidays, or the date that it's served. Um, and that notice has to include only just rent. Um, you'd be surprised at what people try to throw into the three-day notices um, that they give to their tenants. Um, all sorts of like what, things. for example? Um, sometimes they will try to. They'll sometimes they will go ahead and I've seen them try to charge the person for the cost of filing an eviction before the eviction ever even got filed. But usually late fees. Yeah. They usually put late fees. Sometimes deposits that aren't paid. Sometimes water, sewer, mm -hmm. all sorts of other things. But let, okay, and this piece of paper now is this. Do you have to have a, if you're a landlord, do you have to have an attorney to do this? Can you can you get the paperwork from the courthouse or, or can you write it on a piece of uh, Scott towel and submit it? I mean, what's, what's the procedure? Well, for the most part, I mean, you don't need to have anything, you don't have to hire an attorney to file an eviction for the most part. Okay. There are some landlords that do have to have specific, um, have to hire an attorney. Okay. And I'm not going to go into that. No, I, I know. Right. <laughs> that, that would take us all day. But for the most part, if you are a single person who's renting out a house and you don't have anything exciting and the house is in your name, you can file it all on your own. Okay. Um, and that can be as simple as a piece of paper, as long as it says that this is the amount of rent due and it tells you that you have to pay by such and such date and it gives an address of where to mail it to, it's a good notice. Okay, and it's a three-day notice regardless if you haven't paid your rent for one month or ten months? Correct. Okay, and can you file an eviction um, after the person just misses one month rent? Yeah, you can be you can be a day late on your rent, serve the three day notice, and start the process of evicting somebody right that that quickly. Okay, okay. So then the person gets um, served the notice. 
Um, and, and this all is done in, in the courthouse, and well, I mean, they could... The three-day notice isn't done in the courthouse. The three-day notice is done outside. That's something that's a first step. They would file that with their eviction. If you get the landlord does when they go and file the eviction, they're going to right. file it. But that doesn't have to go with the courthouse at all. Oh, okay. They can just d give that to the the tenant and say, "Here's your three-day notice. <clears throat> you need to be out in three days." Okay. What what does the tenant do then? Well, or can the tenant hopefully do? pay? <laughs> <laughs> but if they don't pay, then they just sit and wait until they get served with an eviction. And then once they get the eviction, they have five days, not counting the day they were served. And again, the weekends are holidays, and they have to file an answer. And the tough part is they have to also deposit the rent that's due or file a motion to determine the rent that's due. Um, and that's where a lot of clients can't do that. A lot okay. of clients don't have the rent to deposit, so what happens is the court will you know, get the answer, right, Melanie, and then they'll, they'll get the motion. Some judges will set a motion to determine rent, and usually they'll set that on the same date as the eviction trial, so that gives some clients um, some time to come up with the money, or um, other judges will just rule on the motion to determine rent and say, well, you need to deposit this much money by such and such a date. And that's where a lot of our clients can't do that. Unless sometimes, you know, we can get in touch with Louise's organization and she'll say, well, it takes this long, but we'll be able to pay the rent and catch up on the rent. And then we try to talk to the landlord or their attorney and say, look, you know, if they'll just work with us. We have a promise that it's going to be paid. And sometimes that works. And then sometimes the landlords are just so, you know, fed up, they won't even wait. Okay. And <clears throat> Louise, yeah, where, where do you come in? Uh, the le legal services calls you and... Well, normally the clients will call us as soon as they get what they call a three-day notice to quit or pay. And it can be written on a piece of towel. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Most of them are downloaded off the internet. And they, come, they call us because we have days when you... what well, we have a pre-screening day. And on that pre-screening day, we essentially have maybe two, three hundred phone calls to determine our priorities. And Are who, you kidding me? Two or three hundred? That's, that's not unusual. Yeah. And who answers these <clears throat> phone calls? My staff answers them and they have a pre-screening document. And the first question is, do you have a three-day notice? What do you need? Do you need rent? Do you need utility payments? Do you need, do you have a cutoff notice? Are you in subsidized housing? How many people are in the family? Are there any children under the age of six? Um, all, are you a veteran? Those are the standard on the phone immediate <coughs> screening and then subsequently what happens is We will bring them in as soon as possible by triage priority And of course, it's always been families with children We've had no choice but to really Focus on keeping the kids off the street, right? And mm -hmm. so then what would happen is We would negotiate if at all possible we bring the individual in, make sure they qualify income-wise, because one of the boog bears is that if you are over 30% of area median income, the federal dollar or the state dollar doesn't pay for you, so then we have to go try to find another private pot of money that might pay for you if you make $5 more than you should. So, What, what kind of private pots of money <clears throat> are we talking about? Philanthropy. Yeah. By okay. and large, but. philanthropy. Um, it's a very difficult cycle, but annually we make an effort to secure as much private philanthropy as, be as possible. Um, we also get United Way funding, we get funding from local governments, but that mon money is, st is basically dedicated to staffing because all the federal and state dollars that we were just talking about do not pay staff. Okay. So it's very they just go to direct paying rent financial or... financial assistance, utilities and rent. <clears throat> That's our biggest, I mean, in St. Lucie County, we paid th more than 300 rents in the last nine months wow and probably yeah. another two or three hundred utility bills just in st lucie county i got and but that if you're doing that with federal state dollars there are strings attached i mean there is a criteria enormous strings which is why we have to bring the person in right they have to go through for that's why the pre-screening screen eliminates right and then at that point there's the, all the verification of income that you could possibly imagine and, um, and birth certificates and a whole variety of other mm -hmm. documents, plus a case note that says, I am not able to pay my rent because I lost my job. I'm looking for a job. I may have one coming up next week. As opposed to, 
I'm never going to look for work. That individual who's <laughs> never going to look, it's just, it's a large dichotomy, but as an example, in a very short period of time, you have some issues regarding sustainability, you have a responsibility to the dollar, you have a responsibility to the auditors that come and get you every year. So the process is complex, but we would call the landlord, as Amy and Melanie said, we would get on the phone with the landlord and ask them, will you consider waiting? If we can, if we consider paying, will you consider reducing the rent? Right. Will you wait? Will you take two payments instead of one? All sorts of any possible way. It's called landlord tenant mediation. Oh, okay. Any okay. possible way. And then the other process, part of the process is the housing counseling afterwards that says, you can't have this $900 a month bill anymore. You can't afford it. Therefore, you need to get one of those cheap cell phones and you need to find a different job or work two jobs because most people who live on a wage must work at least 2.1 jobs in St. Lucie County, in Indian River, and in Martin at the regular prevailing renter wage. If wow. you make 10 bucks an hour, you can't pay your rent and your utilities on one job. And the median wage in Indian River, St. Lucie, and Martin is $10.17 for the wage earner, not the passive individual. That's a problem. And Diamond, like wow. what, we're, we're so grateful to <gasps> what Louise does because once that family- We is, all are grateful. Yeah. <laughs> but once they're homeless, then to get into another place, they need first, last, security deposit. A lot of places do credit checks, criminal background checks. So like once that family is out of their home, it's very difficult to get them into another home. So we try to prevent as many as we can, but we're just, I mean, not even the tip of the iceberg do we get to help. Oh, no. But once what, somebody uh, has an eviction, it's almost impossible <clears throat> for them to get a landlord to take them. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, and you use the word sustainability. I mean, there, sustainability that's the key. Is an and, issue. and, of course, you're in a, in a conundrum, if you will, because um, you, want, you want to help someone, but if they have no... Um, potential to help themselves after you've helped them, then it's money thrown away that could be given a to someone. A lot of people look at it that way, but sometimes we help up to three months. And I think that helps a lot in terms of people's own ability to move forward without worrying about, oh my God, 29 days left. Mm -hmm. Right. And we try to do three month lengths. <clears throat> Three month assistance. Well, no, 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 and, and don't get me wrong, Louise. I know what you're but saying. There is saying huge pressure on sustainability, right? And even more huge pressure on eligibility. We were just talking about that. If you make one dollar over thirty percent of area median income, we cannot use this money to help you. Period. And one dollar yeah. over, that's just insane. Right. But that's when you would go to your philanthropic if pot if, it, if you it, have it. It's anybody. not that big, but yes. No, I but got you. In those three months, the person might get benefits, they might get unemployment, they might get a job. I mean, it can make a really big difference those three months. Right, if they have that time mm -hmm. time period. Well, let me just ask you girls, because this is what you deal with all, all the time. What is the average landlord that works with people? Do they... Do they usually, if you're you're calling them, if you're begging them to help, do land are landlords usually pretty good? If they have most of them had enough and they've been doing this and they don't want any part, what, what's your experience? I'm just curious. We start to know the the bad landlords. <laughs> right. Like I mean, we, we see it repeat. Like we, there's one landlord that Melanie dealt with that actually has on his license plate slum landlord. He prides himself. It's on his license yeah, plate. And we have a bad landlord list that's about that long. So when somebody's coming in, and we may relocate them. If they're in a bad landlord's house, rather than spend the money and pay that landlord again, <laughs> we'll out. move them to a better place. Well, let, no, let's we don't back up on it. Like, we don't, I mean, not paying. Well, we have a bad yeah. landlord list. But well, no, no, no. Yeah. Let's back up here, because I want to play the devil's advocate, okay? I'm not a landlord, so I, you know, I don't have a dog in this fight. You say a bad landlord, Louise, but they, they purchased this property, they they are paying for it every month on their mortgage or whatever. They they deserve rent. Um, to they're trying to make money too. 
are you ta is that a bad landlord no. just because that no. landlord no, wants to be paid my, for? That's no. what, okay, so tell that, us what that's you're not talking about. <laughs> what I have a lot of clients happen to them is that their landlord refuses to make repairs. Like it repairs that would end up costing them money because sometimes they will not. I've had clients who have no water. Like they for will months. for months. months. So they have to go spend their own money to go pay for water so that they can get water fixed in their house so that they can, so they have something to drink. Or toilets, right. like or go toilets. to the neighbors just to use the toilet because they won't fix it. So and that's so what we, we mean by a that. A huge amount of absentee landlords, especially in St. Lucie County, there are many, many who have purchased property 10, 15, 20 years ago and may have a property manager, may not, may show up once a year just to check on things, but they make virtually no repairs. We have an inspection. We are required to inspect the property and it needs to pass otherwise we cannot pay the rent and I'm going to tell you that probably 30 percent don't pass. Wow. So those are kind of the bad landlords. Right. Like yeah. yeah, but is that a defense? Let's talk, go back to the legal aspect. Is that a defense if, if, the, if the tenant in no. the law in the eviction oh. says, um, well my defense is I no. shouldn't have had to pay because I don't have a toilet to use. I mean it can be. If okay. you do it right. I mean, the law does allow you to do a seven-day rent withholding letter. So if you withhold, if you write that letter before you start withholding the rent, you do have a, a leg to stand on and go into court and say, I shouldn't have to pay any rent. I mean, what that's considered is almost like a constructive eviction. I got you. And that you're right. being constructively evicted because you're not able to use the entire property at this point because... The house, half the house is molded ridden or you right. know, there's no yeah, water. There's of, of course, the problem with all of this, as we all know at this table, is that most of the people who are renting substandard, you know, premises don't know the law and don't know they need to do a exactly. seven day, right. you know, and, and it is pretty, if my understanding, again, I don't do this and boy, am I glad, <laughs> God bless you for doing it, but um, it is pretty. It is pretty black and white. It's not gray. It's if you haven't deposited the rent or you haven't filed your seven day letter or whatever, you can't. You can't use it's, some of these. No, it's equal. hard. And we have pamphlets. Yeah. So if anyone's watching, we have educational pamphlets that have all the information that we try to get out in the community because we think that you know if a tenant knows that and they do the letter correctly, a lot of times the landlord may fix it because you're withholding the rent. So right. they'll go and they'll make the, the, the repairs. Um, but that's the problem. A lot of people don't know it. And then they go and they use their rent money to make the repair, to get the toilet fixed or get the shower fixed. And then they can't but pay they their rent. But they haven't done the seven And then they can't right. pay their rent. And then they get an eviction notice. And then I'm sure the first thing the judge is going to look for is where's the seven day letter. Right. And do we have a, a good landlord list? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that makes me feel better. Very good landlords. <laughs> we have landlords that will actually roll security deposits from one client to the next. And really? Not, yes, and will not keep it, um, which they all could, of course. They won't make up bogus stuff about there's a scratch on the wall or anything that actually let us put an additional client in if one moved and there was no damage to the property. They don't ask for a second security deposit which helps us a great deal right because we're able to help more people that way how many louise how is do you said the your average <clears throat> phone call on your days or that's, that's 300 and two days yeah day and a half every week no once a month oh but okay the once a month that's the setup for three weeks but by the middle of the month we then open up another call day because sometimes people are on the 1st, people are on the 15th. People have just lost their job. You know, there's a lot of unemployment still, regardless of what the data looks like, or underemployment, significant underemployment, so that they're not able to sustain. Or uh, hours are cut routinely. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Which cause it? Well, okay. We do a thousand rents a year if that's what you want to know at a minimum that's it okay at a minimum and the other piece that we do that's hor horrific is utilities utilities are often better than half the rent in in particular in st lucie county and at the city of fort pierce level utilities are three and four hundred dollars a month for a very small unimpressive two-bedroom 
with a window air conditioning unit. And that alone is stifling in terms of sure. people being able to sustain that housing. We pay a lot of utility bills. We're not allowed to pay utility without rent now. Feds just changed that, but there are other places that you can seek out utility assistance. Okay. But there are a million rules, but utilities is almost as bad as rents. We've paid seven, eight hundred dollars routinely for two months utility. That's staggering. Oh, that's uh, for small, small places. Small, two yeah. bedroom, one bath. Why is <coughs> why would that be? Fort Pierce Utilities, right, Libby? Fort Pierce Utilities is ridiculous in terms of their rates and the other fees that they add on. They're pretty merciless, actually, to be honest with you, so that if a person is late, they do get shut off. And if they have to have it turned back on, there's reconnect fees. And then also on top of that, the deposits the next time or twice the rent, twice the last bill. And for somebody who, you know, brings home 500 bucks a month, I mean a week. Right. I can't and even think of 500 bucks a week, but $500 yeah. a week. Right. You get behind once you're finished. Yeah. You're pretty much done. So the priority, oh gosh, I can't believe this, we're almost out of time, we've got like five minutes, oh my gosh, and there's so much to talk about. What, the triage, let's go back to the triage. It, it, the, the tr Homeless in a car with children, A. <laughs> it happens all the time, sometimes you'll see the address, car. Literally homeless in a car with children, A. Oh okay, B, families with children facing eviction, and C, well, right now it's veterans, but we have separate funding for that. Right. But in addition to that, it's generally severely mentally ill people who have other disabilities that would keep them, hopefully by housing them, would keep them out of jail, keep them out of the hospital, right. and keep them from decompensating. Those are our fundamental priorities, but the continuum of care as a whole voted several years ago that given the limitations, and we get about a million four, a million six a year, Given the limitations that we're talking, you got a kid and you're in a car, you're not going to spend the night on the street if we can help it. Yeah. And uh, Louise, your agency helps um, India River, <coughs> St. Lucie, and Martin, or and, and Okeechobee too, or no? no? Okeechobee opted out of the continuum, but if somebody calls from Okeechobee, you're going to help. Them. I'm not going to say no if the kid really is in a car. <laughs> I can't do that. Absolutely. Well, what what advice? Um, you know, again, to, of course, if they're not paying the rent, they probably don't have a TV and aren't watching this, unfortunately. But any time we can get the word out. First of all, your office, uh, legal services, has pamphlets to to kind of walk them through the legal process. And I they guess. can just call. I mean, if they call us and they tell us that they were served with any type of a notice involving housing, we'll set them an appointment to give them advice. As long as they meet, they have to be 125% of the poverty guidelines. Right. Um, but if they... Is it a financial affidavit somewhat like... No. We're, they just call. We do it over the telephone and we just okay. ask them about their finances. Okay. Um, and then we consider anything with housing as far as like notices um, to be emergencies, evictions, emergencies. So they usually will talk to an attorney that day. Oh, okay, which is great. And then, Louise, can they? Let, let's say they're. Can people call you and get advice prior to this whole process? <clears throat> Generally, start? we have to wait till there's some kind of three-day notice. Right, because you have so That's many the way people the federal to help. Stuff is written. No, we right. have no. Oh, I see. No limit. We have limitations. The private funding even. Unless you're going to document, you have to document the crisis. You have to be able to say this person is in crisis, this person is being asked to leave, this person has lost their job. We're not a housing company that just likes to move people because they want to move. Right. So we have to be careful about how we assist and it has to be well, I mean we have documentation this thick for every client. Right. Because of the, the regulations. The rules and regu yeah. Do you have um, housing throughout the Treasure Coast that that you you could turn <coughs> to, so to speak? I mean, we don't actually own the housing; we pay for the housing. Okay. okay. Except we do but, have a different model from housing. But when I talk about those these people that we talk about, this is tenant choice. We ex assist people in finding the right landlord, and if they come and bring us. A place that's 900 bucks a month and they make $600 a week. We go, that's not going to work for you. Find a yeah. place that's 750 We do that kind of stuff. 
So you counsel people, too. Oh, absolutely. We do housing counseling. And I'm yeah. sure you, you <clears throat> folks do, even though... It, what what you do is more is, is legal. We the do. Legal side We're like of it. social workers, right? Yeah, real social workers. Deal, I mean, because when a client comes, even if they come for an eviction, we try to be more holistic. And if they have sure. children and the children need education, we open up an education file. If they need to apply for benefits, we send them to our SSI advocate. So we try to kind of do what. Louise is doing and try to help everything so that they can kind of get out of the situation. I mean, we can't always, but we, that's what we try to do. Sure. Well, what, uh, so, so again, if, if somebody's in, in a crisis situation, of course, they can't go to you until they've gotten the notice, but they certainly <coughs> could call um, le legal aid and, and get, now, is there a charge for your services? No. No, we're free. We don't okay. charge anything for our services. And just so the public knows, because I get a lot of phone calls as far as, uh, you know, what you all do. I know there's certain things that you do. There's certain things you don't do. Tell tell us in a nutshell what what kind of legal issues you handle. Okay. We, can't, well, we can't do criminal because our federal funding prohibits us, but we do. We try to do civil matters that focus on the people with the greatest needs, so the people, the low income people, um, people that have low English proficiency. Um, so we do domestic violence, um, family matters, we do divorces, we do um, adoptions, temporary custodies. We have a lot of grandparents that are raising their grandchildren. We help them get temporary custody. Um, and we try to prioritize because we have to triage also. Um, so domestic violence and serious children's issues, we're going to accept those cases more so than someone that just kind of doesn't like their spouse anymore. <laughs> um, which happens a lot. Um, but you do do general garden variety divorces. Um, not not anymore because there are oh, resources. Okay. We do divorces if there's domestic violence um, or if there's children's issues that okay. are kind of important. Okay. Or if it's, you know, if there's a senior citizen and they need to try to get alimony or something like that, that we'll do it. But not just your general divorces okay. anymore. Okay. Um, we also do... Um, housing cases, foreclosures, what we were talking about today, the evictions, utility. Like a lot of times landlords lock people out, shut their utilities off. Um, and they we, can't do that either, can they? They're not allowed they? to they do, do that. It, no, but oh, the judges don't, but like, they, they don't like that because it's illegal and they, you know, they're not supposed to just self-help like that. So we usually get a lot of good results when we go into court for that. Yes, we do. Um, and the tenant can get damages for that three months, up to three months in rent or the actual damages. Um, we do benefits, public benefits, SSI cases, unemployment, um, food stamps, um, health care benefits. Um, pipe up money if I'm missing anything. Um, um, well, we do expungements too. I mean, we will. Um, oh, on will, criminal matters. Right. Okay. So oh, we, and that's we work good with to your, okay. like we right. talk to your attorneys because that, um, if you have someone that just has a withhold or if cases get null prost, we can try to help them get their record sealed or expunged, which goes a long way for employment and housing. Oh. Um, so we, we like to do those cases. They're kind of one of our happier cases. Okay, and believe it or not, we are out of time, and we're going to have to, we're going to have another show doing this. This was great. Thank you girls so much. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for welcome. having us. Thank you. <laughs>